Good news, Redditors. We are Matt Groening, David X, Cohen, Billy West, and John DiMaggio. Here to talk all things Futurama. Ask away, meatbags. Hello Reddit. We've returned to the 21st century to answer all your puny human questions about Futurama. We are Matt Groening, series creator, David X, Cohen, head writer, Billy West, voice of Fry, Professor Farnsworth, Dr. Zoidberg, and more, and John DiMaggio, voice of Bender, URL, and more. Matt Groening proof. Link Billy West David X Cohen and John DiMaggio proof. Link also our shiny new mobile game, Futurama. Worlds of Tomorrow, launched today. And it's fun on a bun, baby. Get it here. iOS. Link Android. Link we'll be answering questions here for a little over an hour. Then right after our AMA ends we're also doing a live streamed video QA on Facebook. So talk to us there too. Check that one out on the Futurama Facebook page. Link from 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. PST edit. Thank you all so much for your questions. We've got a run. A few of us might pop back in now and then to answer some more of your questions. Check us out at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon for more live streamed Q&A on the Futurama Facebook page you can ask us even more questions. Not sure if you were aware of its existence, but there's an entire subreddit of people who fall asleep to Futurama. I can't tell you how many times I've had a shitty or stressful day and put on an episode to help me go to sleep and try to make the next one better. Thank you so much for creating something that, when I didn't have any friends, made me feel like maybe I did. Question. One $300 hookerbot or $301 hookerbots? Yes, I do know about Futurama sleepers, and the fact that there's a subreddit devoted to it is proof this is indeed a strange and wonderful world. The truth is I once fell asleep during the show, but it was during a late night Futurama writing session, and the couch was so damn comfy. So would I say we grab a six pack and watch the end of the universe? Your pal, Matt. In episode 2F09, when Itchy plays Scratchy's skeleton like a xylophone, he strikes the same rib in succession, yet he produces two clearly different tones. I mean, what are we to believe, that this is a magic xylophone, or something? Ha ha, boy, I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. As the writer of that episode 1 feel uniquely qualified to answer this. I'm afraid the person who got fired was me. For that error and a number of other, slightly less serious blunders, I was fired off the itchy scratchy writing staff and had to go work on Futurama as a fallback. David the Tent, Cohen. What made Richard Nixon a recurring character? Why not someone else? The writers liked a head in a jar that said Aru. B.W. B.W., are you aware of this? Link. At the time of writing, he was the worst president in American history. Adios, Matt. Well if we come back, it will be someone else. Matt. With Futurama leaving Netflix, I can't believe I must revert to using my DVDs. So, my question is this. What is this, the Middle Ages? Also, with Futurama off the air, what's it like being a bunch of total Zoidbergs, desperately poor and miserably lonely? Edit. Rad. Thanks David. On a related note, I was re-watching some of the old episodes recently and enjoying seeing the various outdated technologies like floppy disks and VCRs that they still use in the year 3000. But it's also very confusing because I remember that even then, we were writing some of those things into the scripts because they were already comically outdated and we thought it was funny. But now I can't remember which ones were hilariously outdated and which ones were just the actual cutting-edge technologies of the time. The information has gone into a black hole. David the Tenth, Cohen. Why does Ross the largest friend not simply eat the other five? He did. Obviously you missed the series finale. David the Tenth, Cohen. When you first started Futurama, how many seasons did you think it would last? 27 years. John. Jurassic Bark. What the fuck man? Tell me about it greater than John. So I think the series end was great, but if given the chance, would you do new episodes for streaming services like Netflix or Amazon? Yes, it was my favorite show and I have real separation anxiety about it BW. Thank you guys for never truly letting this show die.
As a fan it is great to see the people who made it care as much as the fans, even years after it ended. My question is more of a plea. Will you please release an official comrade greeting card? I have been sending my mom gifts with that poem on it for years, and I need an actual card to give to her. Also, who wrote the birthday song? Birthday song. Group effort by the staff. But Patrick Verone gets the check. Greater than John. After watching the live stream on Facebook last week I was absolutely floored by how many characters each of you voice and how you make them all sound unique. For the vocal actors, how do you find inspiration for each individual character you voice? You can get it from the character Bible, which is basically an outline of all the character's traits, his, her point of view. You get it from the drawing, voices that you've heard in your own past. There are many avenues of inspiration. John. What year does the bending unit come out? I'm thinking of pre-ordering but I DK. That's an Elon Musk question. John. I tried about 20 times to get the picture of Fry, saying shut up and take my money, on my bank debit card. The bank rejected it every time due to copyright. Understandable, but plz, I want this. Can there be a way to make it happen? Try this one. Don't know whether or not your bank looks at the card requests by humans on an individual basis or if it's done by image recognition. Either way, keep requesting the card each time with poorer and poorer quality, such as this one, then this, this, and finally this. It's not the same, but I personally find the shittier and shittier quality humorous. How many butt tattoos of Bender have you had to look at? Many, many. Dot too many. I've seen more asses with a Bender tattoo than toilet seats. Greater than John. Any chance we'll see more Futurama episodes or movies in the future? Please 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 say yes. There are no new TV episodes or movies in the pipeline at the moment. However, here and now I promise a different avenue of exciting Futurama news later this summer, no kidding. Keep your expectations modest and you will be pleased, possibly. I am not allowed to say more or I will be lightly phase read. David the Tenth, Cohen. Furnit. The continuity is amazing. Nibbler's shadow under the desk, the museum being free on Tuesday, and other such details. Are you guys really that planned out, and is there any off-beat detail that you know us weirdos have missed? On the episode Fear of a Bot Planet, the mayor remarks that it's been 146,000 days of the annual human hunt with no success, and they before mentioned the planet was taken over by robots 400 years prior. 146,000 days equals 400 years. Love the math jokes more than anything. Can't write Futurama without a calculator. David the Tenth, Cohen. It's there. David the Tenth, Cohen. Is there any joke you guys put into the show that you were really happy, proud of that maybe wasn't noticed by viewers? Or got the reaction you wanted? Yes. Thanks for letting me get this off my chest. In episode 4 ACV10, The Why of Fry, the Nibelonians tell Fry that the giant brains are going to destroy the entire universe. Fry's eyes narrow and he grimly replies, now it's personal. That makes me laugh way too much for a line I wrote myself. Everyone else laugh harder, damn it. David the Tenth, Cohen. We were stuck writing the scene in which the head of Henry Kissinger in a jar was negotiating with the balls, in the episode War is the H-Word. It took two full days to come up with a single line for Kissinger two full days of non-stop unusable testicle jokes. We were going crazy, exasperated and fatigued with the all the balls puns that we were unable to stop making. Finally, someone wearily muttered, this is not a productive area of discussion, and voila. Timeless comedy genius, plus we got to go home. Your friend, Matt. Question. I have always wondered about the iconic joke introduced in the pilot. Pizza delivery for. I. C. Wiener. Did you mean this joke as icy, like cold wiener? Considering he's in the cryogenics lab, or did you mean it as an icy wiener, like visually? I realize I've probably thought too much into this, but I've been watching Futurama for years, and I've always wondered that. Thanks guys. Bill West. Do you think you'll sound like the professor when you're an old, senile, 160-year-old man? I'm a huge fan of your work by the way sir. And John. Well, let's see. I'm 65 and I can do a 25-year-old's voice. 
so by 160 I shouldn't have a problem doing the voice of a 120-year-old. B.W. Billy West. What a stupid, phony, made-up name. For John DiMaggio, I remember in one episode Bender ran into Jake from Adventure Time. Jake asked him what time is it? And Bender told him time for you to shut up. Did anyone working on Adventure Time or Cartoon Network comment on that? Pendleton Ward is a big fan, and Matt is a big fan of his. John. Which would win in a fight? Luck of the Friarish or Jurassic Bark? Jurassic Bark. In the third round. B.W. Jurassic Bark. No question greater than John. Slitte. How much money you got? John. Weirdest request ever. Sir Billy West. How much would you charge to call me on my birthday and say something to me in the Farnsworth voice? I could die a happy man after that, and it's been on my bucket list for a while. I'm totally serious, I would pay a dear price for such a favor. Send me a bitcoin or I'll hold the voice for ransom. Nixon voice, RRR ransomware BW. Hi there, thanks for doing this. What's your take on the 21st century so far? Also, are you aware of this giant mural in Asheville, North Carolina? So, we know mom's first name is actually Carol, but do her, Walt, Larry, and Igner have a last name? Patrick Verone wrote the episode in which mom first appeared, and he named her Edna Miller, his mother's name. We changed the first name to Carol, so there you go. Another useless Futurama factoid. Sincerely yours, Matt. This useless factoid is now concrete canon about her last name. Read it as weird. Whenever I ask my husband about extra money he always responds with blackjack and hookers and leaves it at that law. Whenever I have something to say I blurt out good news everyone. Regardless if it's good or not. Just curious. Do you guys use lines from the show in your real lives as funny answers? If so, which are your favorites? On my last day at work I blurted out good news everyone. I quit. Man, I do not miss that job one bit. How much fun was it recording the DVD commentaries? It was a total party that would later pass as entertainment. B.W. What was the inspiration for Zap Brannigan? And what led to giving him no pants? Genius by the way. He was based on a few big dumb announcers that I used to hear when I was growing up who would make a one-syllable word into four to fill the air with their beautiful, wonderful, dumb voices. B.W. For John. Bender is my favorite cartoon character of all time and I quote him daily. What was your favorite episode voicing Bender? For Billy. What was your favorite moment from playing Nixon's head in a jar? Also I grew up hearing your voice as Doug and Stimpy. So thank you for being a part of me growing up. When Nixon proclaimed, The Great Taste of Charleston Chew, B.W. My answer sucks. All of them. Sorry. Greater than John. What the hell does 9, 10, a big fat hen, the names Bender mean? It means we were stuck on a line for a while, and Bender had to get us out of the scene. If you were looking for deeper meaning, look elsewhere. Writers. How did you guys come up with the phrase SNUSNU? I find the most erotic part of a woman is the boo. She's built like a steakhouse, but she handles like a bistro. What is the favorite musical number that you've recorded for the show? I'm a big fan of the devil song with the Beastie Boys. It has to be Robot's Devil's portion of Fry's opera. That song was nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Music and Lyrics, written by Ken Keeler, by the way. B.W. Singing with Beck was pretty killer. John. What state is New New York in? New Jersey John Matt. Have you ever thought about a series dedicated to the life of Scruffy? Dialogue would be a series of grunts and moans. And a huzz. Greater than John. Furnit. You are a bad parent, and now the authorities know. Expect child services to be knocking on your door sometime soon. Hugs. John. I think it's actually awesome. Kids are smarter than we give them credit for. John. Furnit. New show question.
Here you go. When I was a kid, my mom got annoyed at dinner when my brother and sisters and I kept asking what was for dessert. She'd always say, strawberry surprise. Then, when she served the dessert, she always said, surprise. No strawberries. But finally mom got so aggravated that her new line became, surprise. No dessert. What I'm trying to say is, stay tuned for strawberry surprise. Sincerely, Matt. Roberto and transvestite hookerbot. Greater than John. That's Dave Herman. He's the man. Greater than John. That greeting card voice is amazing. And I see now it is Ms. attributed on some internet pages. The actress who actually did that part is Nicole St. John. She also appeared several more times doing the heartbreaking voice of Sally, the orphan girl with the ear on her forehead. Some internet sites mistakenly credit the card voice as Tara Strong. Great actress who played Bender's tap-dancing rival Tanya in Futurama EP7ACV25. David the Tenth, Cohen. Any Futurama fan knows there are some episodes that just sucker punch you right in the feels. As the writers, cast, crew, are there any episodes that were particularly emotional for you to create? If so, which and why? P.S. Thank you for giving me a show to feel at home with all my adult life. Futurama is love, is life. The last one. It killed me. Greater than John. Thanks for doing this AMA, Meatbags. Matt. If you could go back in time and make any changes to Futurama's characters, plotlines, what would you do and why? David. Were there any challenges that plagued the writers in the writing room? What were they and how were they resolved? Billy and John. What's the strangest vocal direction that you've received in the booth? Not necessarily during the production of Futurama. Do it louder, but make sure it's still soft. John. Louder and sadder. For the last couple of years of the series, we had a 3D printer in or near the writer's room, running all day every day. It was a MakerBot replicator kit model, assembled by Ken Keeler and Patrick Verone. The plaguing part was the noise and molten plastic fumes. Well worth it to print out some homemade benders though. David the Tenth, Cohen. What is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Salted caramel. Bender's favorite flavor would be rust. John. Dear Futurama, you rock. Especially when that guy was on the roof. P.S. Do you know The Simpsons? Okay. I have a few questions. What advice do you have to an aspiring TV writer? What's your favorite Futurama episode? Is there a possibility of another direct-to-video, or possibly theatrical, Futurama movie? To either of the voice actors, what is your hardest character to voice? To Mr. Cohen, when you or any of the other writers were coming up with plot lines and gags, where did you get your inspiration? Now, a question for Mr. Graining. In episode 2F09, when Itchy plays Scratchy's skeleton like a xylophone, he strikes the same rib twice in succession, yet he produces two clearly different tones. I mean, what are we to believe, that this is some sort of a magic xylophone or something? Boy, I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. A la Shatner, geez, get a life. Greater than John. Is there any particular episode that you're especially attached to? As a true cartoon fan, the episode, Jurassic Bark blew me away. I never thought a cartoon would have the resonance to evoke such a feeling of sadness. I was really sad. And, then I got mad at myself for my eyes misting up. B.W. Jake, the brick. Oh wait, wrong show, sorry greater than John. I love all the anthology of interest episodes. Luck of the Friarish, Jurassic Bark, and Roswell that ends well John. 